Hi friends, in our last session, we have completed simple centralized control and pre-selective centralized control. In today's session, we will see selective centralized control and adaptive control system. This is Pezan Kagbi and I welcome you all to our lecture series of machine tool design. So let's begin with our first topic. Speed and fit changing with a selective centralized control. Okay. Now remember we are going to use this control system for changing the speed or we are going to actuate the gearbox. Okay, double cluster gear. Remember double cluster gear. So this gear shifting faults are operated by this centralized control system that we need to keep in mind. Okay, speed is going to be changed. Okay. Now why we can use this selective centralized control? Why we why we have to use this? So in a simple centralized control system, the change from one value of a speed involves passing through the intermediate values. Okay, which means that if we need to shift from 1000 RPM to 3000 RPM, we need to shift in between that is 2000 RPM has to be brought and then only after we can shift to the 3000 RPM. But by using a selective method, we can uh, move from any speed to any speed. Okay. Now the main drawback of such system that is simple control system is that first large auxiliary time is required. Auxiliary time which we know that that is non-productive time. Uh, clamping and unclamping of a cutting tool, clamping and unclamping of a workpiece, comment and uh, movement of a cutting tool before commencement of a cut. All this is included in a auxiliary time. Okay. And second problem is that excessive wear of a sliding gear takes place. Okay. In such cases, it is desirable to employ control system which permits changing of speed from one value to another without having to pass through the intermediate values. So such system is known as a selective control system. Now to understand this, I have taken an example of a four speed gearbox. Okay, using which can be operated using a single lever control. And this is for a horizontal boring machine. This arrangement is for a horizontal boring machine. Now this is a sectional view which is shown. Now the more simplified view I have shown on a bottom side so you can easily understand. This arrangement uses a rack and pinion technique. Okay, rack and pinion will be used to transfer and to move the shifting fork. Okay, so how it's gonna operate? So this is a sectional view first you have to visualize this. This entire portion is a representation of an indexing disk. This is our indexing disk which you can see. Even on the top side you can see this is shown by the hatching lines. And this is a, more, uh, this is a final position when we are going to disengage the in indexing disk. So this line represents a disengagement position. Okay. So let us first see the construction of this diagram. You can clearly see in this view there is an indexing disk shown. Okay, so you can visualize that a disk will be in a circular shape. Okay, so this is our indexing disk. Now, number two over here is a, on, on this top diagram is an indexing disk and over here it is written indexing disk. Okay, I hope that you are clear. Then number three. So number three represents a rack. See, okay, that is a rack and pinion arrangement. So over here also you can see which is shown by this arrow. That is a rack can be moved. On a top side also there is a rack provided. Okay, and this circle is a representation of a pinion. Uh, with this pinion there is a gear shifting fork which is connected. Okay, remember with a pinion gear shifting fork is connected and within this arrangement there is a rack provided. Okay, now this line you can see this is our shaft that is our uh, intermediate shaft let's say. On this shaft there is a double cluster gear mounted. So this is one of the double cluster gear, this is another pair of a double cluster gear okay this is our output shaft on which there are four gears mounted which you can see uh, which means that uh, total there are four gear pairs uh, so we can clearly say that this is a four speed gear box right now this output shaft is connected with our machine tool spindle that is our boring machine spindle okay now this one represents a lever okay so this is a lever which would be operated by an operator and with this lever, we can push in and push out the indexing disk, which means you this disk can be operated by this lever. Okay, guys. Now, how are going to operate? Let's see. That is a working of this system. So, in this gearbox, to engage one of the four available speed on an output shaft, that is shaft number four, 
we need to pull out the indexing disk by means of this lever first okay that is pulling out the indexing disk by the lever okay so that it does not push any of the racks okay that is you can see there are two pairs of a rack and there is one pinion provided which means there are total four racks provided and there is a one pinion between two racks okay now the disk is turned to a position where which is shown by an arrow or we can say indexing is done to obtain a next appropriate spindle speed okay after doing an indexing to a required speed it is again pushed back there is a indexing disk is pushed back by means of a same lever okay so it is going to push the corresponding pair of a rack which means you can see there are two pairs of a rack so either of the pair of a rack will be pushed and because of that pushing we can say a gear shifting fork will be operated and it will move the double cluster gear on either this side of a gear or it can engage another pair of a gear so this way the pinion is placed between a rack to rotate and move the appropriate fork to shift the gears so remember guys that indexing disk will be pulled out by means of a lever we are going to shift the we are going to rotate the indexing disk at an appropriate position uh, corresponding to a speed which is required after rotating to appropriate position we are going to release the indexing disk so it will again push back to its original position and pushing the required rack once a rack is pushed it will operate the pinion and a pinion will operate the shifting fork appropriate shifting fork which is going to shift the double cluster gear on either of the gear pair okay so in this way we are going to change the speed of a gearbox that is of a boring machine okay now let us see the next type now adaptive control system provides an automatic control of the operating parameter so that cutting speed and feed values may be adjusted automatically during machining corresponding to the change in width and depth of cut along with hardness of a work material which means it is a automatic control optimization will take place automatically operator doesn't have to do anything right once we are going to set it it is going to perform three functions that is monitoring optimization and execution so as you can see i have written over here three functions of adaptive control system first monitoring second optimization and third is execution now what will come in under monitoring so within monitoring involves the online measurements of one or two parameters of a cutting process so we know the parameters of a cutting process that is speed speed and depth of cut it is going to monitor these three parameters and going to evaluate it is going to determine the values to in order to find out a current performance of a machining system okay now once it has recorded these values this measured value will be input to a optimization element okay remember first step monitoring second this values which has been calculated during this monitoring process will be an input to the optimization element now what the optimization element is going to do so we would say this element is going to compare the current performance with the rated performance of a system and in case of any change we would say that it will use the optimizing algorithm to carry out online optimization and calculate the adjustment which is required in a parameters that is speed speed and depth of cut to achieve the optimum performance okay so accordingly if there is a any change compared to the rated performance so automatically this control system will adapt the most suitable uh, values of uh, values of this parameters so that we can achieve a performance nearer to the rated performance that is an optimum performance so this will be done by optimization element basically optimization element is a software element and monitoring is a hardware element okay now next is execution so the adjustment which are done by optimizing element are then implemented by the execution element okay now we can say that it is the same that a monitoring and executions are hardware functions whereas optimization is a software function these three functions are integrated to make a functional adaptive system now there are basically two types of adaptive control system first is adaptive control optimization even it's called aco 
Now, what is going to happen in this adaptive control optimization? So, in this system, a performance index is defined. Okay, so a predefined index will be there, which is to be kept on its optimum value. Okay, during the process, in order to get an optimal surface quality or a geometric accuracy or a maximized production rate or a minimum cost, which means that a performance index could be either a geometric accuracy, a maximum production rate, or a minimum cost. Okay, so based on that value, which is predefined, it will try to bring the actual values to this optimum values okay so this will be done by adaptive control optimization where a second type is called a adaptive control constraints even it's denoted by acc now what's going to happen so in this constraints for a various parameters that is speed speed and depth of cut are specified which should be approached but not exceeded which means a predefined limit will be given to how much maximum speed can be kept how much speed has to be kept and how much depth of cut maximum can be kept so up to that we can approach that limit but beyond that it will not be exceeded and that will be taken care by adaptive control constraint system okay guys so in today's session we are completing with our chapter so in this session we have discussed about selective control system and adaptive control system in this we need to remember that how a selecting control system is operated you need to explain with a entire diagram the procedure of how it's going to operate okay and after that adaptive control system in this we you need to mention that uh, what the adaptive control system is going to do and second how what are the functions of adaptive control system how many functions are there that is monitoring optimization and execution and how uh, and what uh, each function is going to do okay and how they are integrated that we need to mention in this adaptive control system along with that also classification of adaptive control system can be asked so which we have discussed there are two types of adaptive control system adaptive control optimization and adaptive control constraints so these are the most important questions which could be asked that is explain adaptive control system okay guys so with this we are completing with our chapter now in next session we will start with our new chapter that is machine tool structures so till then stay tuned and thank you all